You are so loved by God today and know that the goodness of God is chasing after you. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Well, welcome to Hope Today. I'm Anna and I am joined by Sydney and Matt. And Sydney, we have a fun conversation coming up today. Yeah, really, really looking to it. You know, the Bible says in the Song of Solomon, don't awaken love until the time is right. And if you're waiting on God for a spouse, we have an encouraging message for you coming up on Hope, Hope Today. Joel Gray will be joining us in a moment to share about the Steel City Singles Conference and a little bit of his journey and his heart when it comes to trusting in God for marriage. He's a dear friend of mine, a brother in Christ of mine, so I'm really looking forward to this conversation because I know so many people, Matt, waiting on God, it's a hard thing, but it's a trust thing that we have to put our hope in Him. Yeah, you know, I, I'm like trying to remember what it was like to be single. I, I feel like that's making me sound old. You know, <laughs> my wife and I, we celebrated 11 years this year, so we're, wow. we're in the double digits. You know, but I'm thinking back, just like you're saying, you know, it is kind of like confusing and a little odd, you know, and you, and you get awkward when you're single too, you know. Um, but I just love the scripture. that just says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing yeah. and obtains mm -hmm. favor with God. And I just think that it's so important mm -hmm. for that relationship because you need that spouse. You need that one that's able to sharpen you and pull the greatness out of you. And I don't know, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to learn some stuff and it's going to yeah. take me back you know, on, yeah. some, on some memory lanes today too. Right, so. absolutely. Well, you know, the, I think the interesting thing is, is that in all different stages of life, you might find yourself single, right? So here I am middle-aged and after 20 years of marriage, I'm single again. And so do I go back into the dating world? Do I stay, do, am I happy being single? You know, these are all things that we go through, that we deal with different stages of life. And you know what? I just want to say today that there is beauty in singleness. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that too, because we don't need to sit around being all sad. It's, it's a good thing sometimes. Yeah, you know, singleness <laughs> is a beautiful thing. It's truly a gift from God. So my husband and I, we celebrated five years of marriage That's and a good. little, yeah, and a little bit of our testimony. So I was one, I'm a big um, proponent of like holiness and purity. So I waited on God. I saved myself till marriage and I trusted in the Lord. And I'm not, I'm being honest. It was very, very difficult for me. Some of the seasons, like, you know, I'd be in relationships. I thought it was going somewhere. thought I was going to get married. Bah! Nothing happened. And as I went through a season where God spoke to me that my husband was coming and different prophets would be like, your husband is coming. I said, if one more person tell me my husband coming because I'm a single, <laughs> singles get, I was like, be quiet. You know, I just, but I really had to learn how to wait on the Lord. And so God spoke to me in a really powerful way through dreams and just the way that he connected my husband and I. And so I just want to encourage you today. I know there's a lot of you that have called in and say, you know, I'm waiting on God for a spouse. It doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, no matter the age, it is so important to wait on the one that God has for you because you don't want to run into those. There's counterfeits and Ishmael's and there's all these different things. So today we just really want to have a conversation to encourage you. But you know, just for a moment, guys, I know just really feel and sense in my spirit. I know we're going to talk about singleness and waiting, but I just really feel just to address quickly because we have, you know, our viewers that are out there in Florida and just praying yes. for them in that situation that is going on. So mm -hmm. Matt, can you just take a moment and just pray? I know Absolutely. we have viewers. I don't know if they're able to watch in Florida or yeah. not that are down in Orlando, but just yeah. our hearts to go out to them and what's happening in Florida. Absolutely. Well, Father, you say we're two more agree upon anything than it shall be done. So we just lift up all of our brothers and sisters right now that are facing just this storm, this hurricane that's down in Florida. Holy Spirit will be with them, guide them, give them discernment and wisdom on where they need to go, where they need to be. And God, we just pray protection over everyone that's down there. God, we speak to anyone right now that, that maybe has gone through that storm and they've lost their livelihoods, they've lost things. And we just pray, God, do exceedingly and abundantly in their life, return unto them more than enough. And I just pray peace, be still to that storm in Florida. And we pray this right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank Amen. you for praying. Cause you know, I'm actually like, I have like a testament I just want to share that's like a prayer. Like, I mean, it's amazing what God did. So my mother-in-law actually lived in Punta Gorda where wow. it was like, Everything is hit. Mm. She had like God spoke to her to sell her house before and she's back up here in State College. So I'm just like, praise God. But we need wow. to, you know, really pray for the people that are down in Florida. Also in Cuba, there's a lot going on. So let's just keep our hearts in prayers on them today. Well, we're going to take a quick little break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about singleness and finding love and waiting on Jesus with Joel Gray. We'll be right back. Stay with us. How can I know God's will for me? It's a question that haunts us all at times. When we're looking for the right job, 
thinking about moving to a new city or deciding whether or not to get married. We long for God's direction and His warm reassurance that we're heading the right way. A Cloud by Day, a Fire by Night captures A.W. Tozer's teaching on the will of God. Inspired by the story of God leading his people out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, Tozer's wisdom and biblical insight will help guide you in decisions of your own. You can be reassured of God's presence every step of the way. Request your copy of A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night with your best gift to support Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your partnership. Joel Gray is an emerging, emerging powerful leader in our city who has a passion to help young adults wait on God and trust in his timing when it comes to love and marriage. He's the co-host of the Steel City Singles Conference that's coming in October in Pittsburgh. Joel, welcome to Hope Today. So hey. glad to see you. Thank you guys so much for having me. <laughs> Before we dive into the conference and what it's about, can you tell us a little bit about you because yeah. you're from this area. Born and raised in Pittsburgh. Um, grew up mainly in like the Squirrel Hill area. Now live in Bellevue. Um, yeah, and I currently go to Allegheny Center Alliance Church on the north side. Found that church in 2015, right before I went on a mission trip to Kenya. Fell in love with it. Um, and yeah, been on this single journey since 2018. So talk to us a little bit about the single journey and what yeah. it's been like for you as like trusting in God for a spouse. Yeah, so I was blessed to grow up in a house of believers, right? And I think that was pivotal just to my life, uh, especially when I was out dating. Um, like anytime I would date a girl and just sense like not that in alignment, it was just my guiding light to say, Lord, all right, I'll be patient. 2018 comes around, ended it like a three year relationship. It was rough. All, all breakups are rough. <laughs> not going to lie. You all know that. But I always would just sit with God and say, what's up? Right. So 2018, what's next? 2020, COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Lord, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go outside no more. <laughs> I don't use dating apps, right? Uh -huh. um, so there was just a lot of factors, and I think God was really challenging me, like, son, I want to spend time with you. You know, I want to really get to know you. And I thought I knew him. Five years old, I gave myself to God, God right? Like, I really was starting to ask questions at that age, which is, it might sound mild, but it is very true. Um, but I think he was really trying to get my attention for intimacy with him mm. and, um, instead of women. And... Then he started to reveal to me how I was like idolizing being married or a wife. Mm -hmm. And that kind of was not the focus of marriage, you know, that's not the design that he made. Um, and so uh, during the pandemic as well, I started the book, uh, men's book club called Digging Deep Ministries. We meet every Wednesday. But anyways, there's a gentleman that joined a group named Tommy Scales. And when I first met Tommy, I never had like a male like pursue me to want to be my friend that way. And he really did that to come alongside me because he was single as well. And he's like, bro, we, I know it's tough, but let's do this thing together and hold each other accountable. And so that's kind of like been the journey of um, this. Um, and that's the other co-host of the Still City Singles Conference. Mm. That's beautiful. And so just talk to a minute because I think what you're talking about, I think a lot of times like Ann and I, we can probably relate as women when it comes mm -hmm. to being single. Like, I mean, we're like, oh, it's a sisterhood. We could <laughs> ran together. Yeah. But for men, yeah. it's, it's a little it's a little different. It yeah. Is. Men are different. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, I, I think, yes, men are different because I think they have this mentality of masculinity. means like be tough, mm -hmm. don't be vulnerable. But uh, our Digging Deep Ministries really blessed us to make sure that we provide a space where it's like, we're going to show you tears, we're going to show you realness, and let's talk about it. And so like now that's like my whole mission is to, anytime I lock arms with young men or older men, like let's really have real conversation. Um, so that's been our journey. And uh, so me and Tommy were to kind of tie into the Still City Conference. We were driving. And at this time, I had hosted like three different little single hangouts for Christians because I had met a young lady. And she was like, where's all the single men? And I was like, I know a few. Um, <laughs> so I told her, Gra grab her friends. And I grabbed my friends. And we had a hangout. Um, but then Tommy was like, bro, we should do a conference. And uh, I was very hesitant. but. Um, that's where we're going. God started opening up doors. Uh, we met this young lady named Esther Marie, who wrote a book called Single Shouldn't Suck. It's basically her journey. Same story of like, Lord, I'm getting tired. I've been, you know, celibate and, you know, I'm getting old. Where's my man? Um, and it's really about her journey of uh, her single journey. So 
we thought it would be a great candidate to bring into the picture for this conference and have these real type of conversations. Yeah, cool. You know, it's, it's funny. I'm just thinking about, okay, Sydney called us guys out, you know, so we got to talk. We got to call Come all on. the men out there are possibly watching. But Joanna, we were laughing backstage. It's funny when there's an event that comes up, you know, women, they gather real quick for whatever reason. They're, they're on point. Quick but men, we're slacking a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll admit to it, you know, myself. Yeah. But if, if you could, uh, what would you say to any single guy out there to encourage them? What, what do you think that they need to uh, just know what's one thing that you could say to them to, to push them in their time of sickness? Well, one, you're not alone. There's a whole community out there, but you have to be proactive and going after it, right? There's a lot of resources, um, and I feel like this is a safe spot to get connected to. Um, so come and see if you, if you need encouragement and, you know, you're tired of scrolling on hands or whatever, <laughs> pull up, you know, <laughs> pull up and hang out with us. And, um, you know, it's, I think it's going to be a great day. Uh, of just conversation, meeting a lot of single women. <laughs> I mean, he says right now the ratio is what, like one to five or one something? To six, one to seven. Yeah, so men, I mean, there's going to be lots of beautiful yes. Christian women yeah. hanging yeah. out there. So that's a big incentive. Yeah. But I think sometimes fear can keep us away from mm. things like conferences. Mm -hmm. Because even for men, like you said about there's a fear of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, I'm gonna go to this conference. Are they gonna make me like share all my emotions and get <laughs> tissues out? So yeah. what can they expect from that day? Yeah, so um, that day there'll be worship. I mean, we always gotta go into the throne room with praise. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to a powerful worship session. Um, and then Esther's gonna share her story and then we're gonna have breakout groups. So okay. it, you're not, if you come and share, it's not gonna be in front of everybody immediately. Um, I think when you have that small intimate circle like this, right, um, to kind of just digest what was shared. Uh, that's what you can expect. Free food, right? Who doesn't like free food? Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to just have a nice interview with Esther, talk about our stories, me and Tommy. Tommy has a powerful story, too, um, of his single journey. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll, you'll walk away with some best practices and understand that you're not in this alone. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, especially coming out of COVID, where everybody was alone, right? technically, um, and just use it as an encouragement. And our goal with this is just to build a community. If there's sparks that happen in the room, praise God. But at the end of the day, like, we want to take this group of people and say, all right, if we want to go bowling, let's all go hang out. You know what I'm saying? Right. So just to continuously tie you to a community mm -hmm. of believers where we can challenge each other and grow. And hey, if there's some marriages that come out of this, praise God. <laughs> That's the goal, like marriages come out of it. You know, we have like a graphic we can put on the screen yeah. that has like details. There it is right there yep. on the conference. So you see it, it is October, Saturday, October 22nd. So yep. from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so is there going to be like speed dating too? Or like nope. none of oh, that? Shoot. Okay, okay. Speed okay. Dating. <laughs> so I just got nervous. <laughs> if you scan that QR code, this will take you straight to the page where you can sign up. It is $10. Um, but after the event, we're having like a little mixer is what i'll call it um so that's where you can call it speed dating yeah okay. so if you come to a conference you see something in the room stay <laughs> after it, it, it continue the conversation after that you know Joe, i love this so much is just how like i don't know if there's ever been a christian singles conference in Pit i have never heard of such a thing yeah. i think it's yeah. awesome because yeah. i know it's really hard like i know well for matt like us being mil like millennials mm. is that i didn't have the whole swipe app experience right. and so now just a lot of friends that I have that a lot of like are you know just str struggling just to meet people or to find people or you go on the app and I know mm. Anna like the stories you shared <laughs> you shared with me of just like nightmare situations of yeah. going on that it's like I mean this is a real thing like the whole dating game it's changed mm. it's a game yes it's, it's totally changed I'm a traditional though so that's why I'm not on these dating apps yeah. <laughs> And I mean, the, the thing that encourage people is when you come, we're not like, we didn't go to university to learn how to date, right? It's just, we all say yes and amen to like, let's just be vulnerable about our journeys and see how many people have our same journeys in common. Yeah. Um, and then understand like, we're in this as a community. Like I'm rooting, if somebody, there's, if there's a spark in the crowd, I'm rooting for y'all, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So much that I wanna see y'all get married type of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, same for me, if I meet a, a great person, awesome, but, yeah. Um, I'm leaving that all in God's hands, and that's what we're trying to encourage people is like, just come and trust God's process. You're in that room for a reason. Yeah. One important thing I, I think you said, Joel, uh, a little bit ago is it's about the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about coming and finding right away, hey, who's, who's going to be my next day? Who can I hook up with tonight? You know, obviously it's not about that, but maybe you can speak that a little bit. Why, mm -hmm. why is the relationship first so important? 
Uh, so technically, guys, we were married to God all, all the time. If you believe in Christ, like that should be your first love, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that should be your energy when you're not married. Um, and, and honestly, I know that sounds crazy because you want to tangibly hold somebody and whatever, but I can't say how many times in my life, like really leaning into that because I would be tired of like talking to so many different people. Like that's draining, right? Yeah, yeah. Spending time with God is not really draining. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why really teaching people how to take a deep breath, like it's okay if you spend time with God. Um, I think Sid, you said something to me. Uh, if not, I think, I think it was you, but like you, <laughs> I want a person so hidden in God, I can only find them if I'm spending time with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, that's just something I want to share with people. Yeah. And, and encourage them in that. And I think it will help them reflect on their current situations. Like, you know what, this is draining. And I do feel tired. Yeah. Maybe I do need to tap out for a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think relationship first with God is key. Cause even when you get married, that's just, that should still be your first love. Yeah. Yeah. And that will only strengthen your love with him. I want to say too that, um the relation, like you said, the relationship with God is primary, mm -hmm. but then in that season of singleness, our relationship, the growing of ourselves is also of primary importance, yeah. right? Because whenever you're looking for that spouse, you want to bring a whole person, your whole self mm -hmm. to that relationship instead of looking for that person to like fill yep. something. Yeah. And so in this time of waiting, um, how have the, the men in your life, the different things that you've practically put, how has that helped you to grow as a person, to, to grow into that wholeness? Um, so a uh, few years back around that time of transitioning into singleness, I found, so the late great Dr. Miles Monroe, he did a whole series of, on singleness. Mm -hmm. And that's something that he said that you're technically always single, right? Meaning like you should be your full self committed to God all the time. And the beauty of the two worlds coming together is that, right? right. Um, so for me, in this single time, I've definitely leaned into like men's groups yeah. um, and ministry. My schedule's pretty wild and I know I'm gonna have to adjust when I meet my bride, but I'm, I, I kinda have committed to some projects where I can only do it as a single man so I can help mm -hmm. develop, you know? So I'm leading different leadership teams. Yeah. Um, I oversee youth uh, pastors right now and things like that, but this is where I think these are things that God was trying to shift me into. Yeah. Um, so when my bride comes, she can join me in that work. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of like the approach I've taken um, to really use this time wisely right. to grow in the person that he's called me to be. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful job. It hasn't been perfect though, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me just lay that out there. It's not been perfect. I will say that on yeah. record. We understand, there's, we there's always bumps yeah. along the way. And right. I just want to say, like, I'm just so proud of you because we met like years ago. We were actually at a, like, you were um, a groomsman and I was a bridesmaid at a wedding. And yep. so wow, um, nice. that's like, we, I don't, I don't remember like how many, it was like years. I don't know. It was like, yeah, I think they just celebrated three years. They did. Yeah. They yeah. just celebrated. Okay. The Najangas just celebrated three yeah, years. And so, yeah. So <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much yeah. for just like your heart and what you're pouring out. And we just declare and decree that your bride is on her yeah, way. Right. And then uh, hopefully next time. Oh, there might be some on my finger. finger. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that be God will. I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm, I'm not going to tell him to call the prayer line and be like, uh, <laughs> just, right. I'm just kidding. The phones are ringing like crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, of Joel. Course. And make Thanks sure that you. So <laughs> Thank you so much, Joel. Just make sure you go to the Steel Cities Singles Conference. You see it right there on the screen. Mm. Saturday, October 22nd at Allegheny Center Alliance Church. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you guys Tru for having me. Truly Appreciate enjoy. You. Proud of your brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're going to take a little quick break and then we're going to take some time to encourage and speak into your spirit. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When we say hope happens here, it's not just a gimmick, it truly reflects the new life our viewers experience every day. I was fortunate to hear the truth of the gospel at an early age, but not everyone shares that story. And that's where our Cornerstone TV family steps in to bridge the gap. Christian television is one of the best way to tell the world the truth, where you don't have to live in chaos, and you can access peace and hope, and that there is a God who loves you. Bridge of Hope is coming soon on Cornerstone Television Network. Get involved and hear from special guests, Auntie Ann Beeler, founder of Auntie Ann's Pretzels, David and Nicole Binion, Jay Gilbert, Mike Smalley, 
and Jennifer Evaz. Join us October 3rd through 7th at 8 p.m. for Bridge of Hope. Welcome back to Hope Today. I hope that you are enjoying the conversation that we had with Joel right before the break about dating, about the singles conference coming to Pittsburgh. But we know that some of you were also waiting to see our guests, Tavares and Safa Gray today. We had promoted them in the newsletter to be with us, but guess where they live? They live in Florida, and so due to the hurricane, they are without power, so we were not able to Skype with them today. Um, but we will do our best to reschedule them and bring them on, and we're thankful that Joel was able to, to step in. Uh, but for now, we want to turn to God's Word for some life-giving encouragement. Yeah. Matt. Yeah, uh, so our scripture today is out Genesis 2, verse 18, and I share the scripture a lot whenever um, I'm ordaining couples and, and marriages, but it says... Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. I love this promise because we always talk about, you know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron, but we obviously know that God places specific people in our lives strategically so that they can pull the greatness out of us. They've got strengths that complement our weaknesses and vice versa. And I, I just feel like we can take the time right now and maybe there's people watching at home and maybe you're heartbroken. Maybe you've had a bad relationship and, and now you're in this place of feeling hopeless and thinking that, oh, I don't know if there is somebody out there. I mean, this is God's word and God's word is his will for our lives. God has somebody strategically for you. So I wanna encourage anybody out there, you know, cast all your cares upon God, allow him to mend and heal your hearts. He has somebody that is out there for you. If you're questioning, if you're wondering, I know you're enjoying being single again, <laughs> you know, but, but maybe there are people out there that are, they're just kind of hurt and broken right now. And so maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Um, somebody that's just watching at home that going through that. Yeah. So if you are waiting on God, it is the best place to be yeah. and just now being married for five years and y'all knew me when I was single and I was waiting on God and it wasn't pretty and I, there was tears that I cried and um, I just want to share this quick little testimony one of the hardest tests that God actually put me through when I was waiting in my season of singleness is I remember um, that there was a group of friends after church are like oh let's all get together and God was like no I don't want you to get together with them I want you to go to the Pittsburgh Arts Festival and spend time with me and I'm like are you kidding me like I mean being around thousands of people right thousands of couples thousands of families and I remember walking through and I was just like I have never felt so lonely in my life even thinking back to that moment I'm getting a little teary-eyed because it was rough <laughs> and I remember sitting on this bench and I just was like God if you want me to be single for the rest of my life I'll trust you because it's all about you and I remember, I'll just admit, like I saw a coworker here that like I saw his family passing by and I was so ashamed to even say hi because I was by myself. And if you've had those moments where you just feel so alone and so by yourself, God sees you and he hears you and he sees the tears that you cry. But what I learned in that moment when I was sitting on that park bench by myself was just me and God, that he is my father, that Jesus is my king, he's my husband, he is my helper, he is the one for me, and that's what's most important. And you know, it was just like a year or so later that I did meet my husband, Jake, and now we're married, but I think that moment, God, it stood out to me so much, and I still remember, and I went back to that park bench, and I sat there, and I had tears, you know, just thinking of like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> I actually met my husband, like my husband, the first time we met was like, or we hung out was actually at Point State Park in that very place. I just, that just hit me, I just realized that, but it was in that very place that I said, God, I'm gonna trust you. That's the very first time I remember standing in front of the fountain. I remember Jake and I took a selfie together and I said, something is different about this man and here we are. And so we just wanna encourage you today, just if you're waiting on God, trusting on him, he knows the plans that he has for you and his timing is perfect. And then the other thing I just wanna quickly say, I love this scripture is about um, encouragement. It's like make a helper. It's this Hebrew word, ezer kenegdo, and it means this power corresponding to man. See, when you're called to be a wife, and what I've learned is even with my husband is I'm that power that's standing right next to him, the Holy Spirit that's next to me, and I get to intercede. I get to pray for my husband. There's things I get to declare and decree now for my family and for our future children. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. It's a beautiful assignment. So just trust in God. He will give you the right person. And ladies, he will find you. Don't be looking for him. He will find you. And men, if you're waiting for that woman, he will 
show you. Anna, any thoughts? Yeah, so with my situation, obviously I'm, I was married and then divorced and then found myself single again. And so, you know, I had to figure out what does dating look like? What, what am I going to be like whenever I enter back into this? And I really did press into a healing journey and into um, just a studying and a seeking out God's wisdom. And I'll tell you what, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was that if you have been divorced, if you have lost a spouse and you are broken and there are gaping wounds and, and it's so tempting to just look for a person to come in and let, have those feel good feelings come back, right? To release all those feel good chemicals. But all that's doing is masking a wound that still needs to be healed. And what happens if we get too fast into a new relationship and we still have all this woundedness, then we are in a way using this person in a way that God never meant for us to use that person. And if they are doing the same thing, then over time we are depleting each other instead of adding to one another. So the advice was work on yourself, heal, get whole so that you are a whole person and you will attract whole people. And when two whole people come together, there is multiplication and God will use that relationship and flourish that relationship. And it will be so life-giving to both of you. And it will be life-giving to the kids, if that's in the future or to your ministries or to the world, however God uses you. So this time of waiting, know that God does not waste that time. So lean into him, listen to his word, see what he is speaking to you to give you wisdom so that the days ahead will be full of joy for you. Yeah, yeah, I think everything that we're saying today, the most important thing is, you know, your relationship with God is valuable. Don't take that for granted. Man, get your time and your heart right with God first. And this way, when you find that loved one or you find that relationship, you're able to bring something to the table rather than seeking everything you need through that other person. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, you all, for joining us for this really important and powerful conversation about relationships, about singleness, about marriage, about wholeness. But just like we've all been saying and Anna said so beautifully, it's all about finding wholeness first in Him. Have a good one. <laughs>